All right. This is uh, joint work with Emil. Uh, we are investigating the Danish admission system, which is uh, for higher education, which, which has some interesting facts that, that, uh, that I'm going to try to unpack uh, mainly theoretically, but also show you how uh, our theoretical model maps to uh, the, the actual setting. Um, all right. Uh, oh, it does work. Yes. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of motivation. So the, it's been some time since we had the, the last uh, talks about college admission and uh, school choice. So uh, to remind you, uh, college admission and school choice is sort of the gatekeeper to education possibilities and, and where people can have the resources to invest in themselves. So this is a really critical way of providing equity and access. I, I won't be talking that much about equity here, but I'll, I'll be more focusing about access and different kinds of, of merits and, and, and how we can uh, choose uh, a system where, where we can actually, uh, by, by the choice of merit, uh, can actually optimize certain things. Okay, so. When, when we think about school choice and college admissions, there are two uh, information problems that, that, that are uh, present. The first is that we, we don't know the preferences of uh, the college and uh, school applicants. Uh, th that is to some extent uh, solved, I'll, I'll get back to that. But we also don't know which are the, the, the most qualified applicants, okay? So we, we need some measure of ranking and, and how do we best do that? That, that's the topic of, of, of this uh, paper. Okay, uh, just a, a comment on, on the first problem, the, the lack of information about the preferences that is solved by the choice of mechanism. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but, but the mechanism called deferred acceptance for which that was given a Nobel Prize 10 years ago, it actually solved this problem in an ordinal sense, uh, but, but it does not solve it in, in the sense that, that schools do not get to know with the most qualified applicants, okay? So there, there's still another information problem present, okay? So, so what, what are the options that are uh, most normally uh, used to solve this? Well, one is to uh, screen uh, all applicants. This is done in the US, this is option two. Another is to just use some uh, cost measure, say some standardized test scores and just admit those with the highest ones. Okay, so, so this, this gives us two very extreme solutions on the one hand, we have one where we have a, it's extremely cheap to implement. We just need a test score, bang, run the algorithm. The other is that we, we need uh, to screen everyone. This, of course, uh, is very costly. Uh, we call it congestion. And um, what about something in the middle? That, that's what we ask here. That's what the Danish admission uh, system does. Um, the core idea is that, that we can allow students to self-select into uh, actually being screened or not. Uh, and and there are, there, we, we propose two different ways of, of doing that. And then we evaluate their uh, properties in terms of strategic properties. So do people uh, lie, et cetera, and, and, and the equilibrium. But then we also analyze the welfare properties. Okay, uh, the reason why it works is that, that the students who know that they are good are the ones who will self-select into uh the being screened okay that, that's sort of the, the idea so we don't need to screen everybody all right uh th these are <laughs> two uh characters drawn from uh open ai's uh software uh uh, uh drawing of a, a male and female uh, college applicant let's call them ann and bob uh, my example uh, is is a college admission system here where we have Ann and Bob are competing for college A and B, and we have that both prefer college A and, and especially Ann who very much like uh, college A, okay? And, and, and both we, if, if we look at it from the college perspective, actually uh, the college A would prefer to have Ann admitted, uh, but uh, college B would prefer to have Bob admitted. Okay, so it's very stylized. Uh, now at the surface level, uh, we have the eligibility score, and there we have that Bob actually had the highest test score. So, so he will get admitted first if, if we just uh, run it with test scores. Okay, so I'll, I already spoiled this, but uh, if we are using the course information, so only uh, the eligibility score, then we have that uh, uh, N is admitted to college A, B, and uh, Bob is admitted to college A, and it gives us a total welfare of eight. What about the other way that we could implement this in deferred acceptance? Well, we screen everyone, 
actually this gives us a higher gross gross uh, total uh, welfare uh, we have a total welfare of eight uh, or 12 but what if we introduce the application cost so that it's costly both for the applicants to uh, solicit an application in terms of time spent but also for colleges to uh, screen the applications then we have a net total welfare of eight okay so so the, the systems are equally good now you can see there that there is probably space for something in between and that's the two mechanisms that I will try to outline. But but first, let me try to give you a, a brief, very concrete example of, of what I mean. Okay, so we have that, that Anne is interested in College A, so we want to give Anne the chance to uh, disclose information about herself in addition to the standardized test score. Okay, that, that's, that's sort of uh, the, the, the task that, that we uh, endow uh, all um, students with. So let, let's set this up with uh, two formal mechanisms. We have the first one that we call uh, the quota-based uh, deferred acceptance with voluntary information disclosure. Okay, Th this is uh, it's actually quite simple. Okay, we take a college, we divide it into two quotas. We have one with regular admission, so or or, or course admission, so based on GPA. Uh, the the rest uh, of the college admits based on uh, this alternative admission, so based on the disclosed information, okay? This is actually what's done in Denmark, okay? Uh, so it, it, it's not uh, something that is taken out of a hat, it's also used in uh, other uh, Scandinavian countries. We could also think about a, a, a mechanism that is very similar to one that has been studied in the literature, which is one of the most efficient ones called uh, choice augmented uh, deferred acceptance. and. It, the idea is that, that uh, when a, a student applies, then, then instead of splitting it, the colleges into two, then, uh, then we compute a sort of an expected score uh, based on the information they have solicited. And, and this expected value, say, of college completion, that, that is the college payoff, is, is then used to rank all applicants, and then we take the highest first and run the third acceptance afterwards. Okay, So two mechanisms. They're kind of doing the same thing, uh, and now I will show you some uh, properties. But let's just first revisit the example. In this example, we, when we use this, uh, this unified uh, David mechanism, it, what we see now is that Anne actually applies to College A because she's the one who is the most qualified in, uh, in, uh, in one, once the college uh, learns her, her true type. And, and therefore, she discloses information, and, and she gets into uh, college A. And, and on, on a high level, uh, the aggregate welfare is such that people are better off. Of course, uh, Bob would still have liked to get into college A, but uh, th this is sort of the, the alternative uh, system. And, and we can see that, that the, the, the welfare in this system is that we have already improved. Okay, So, so th this is the takeaway that, that I will try to formalize in a, in a very uh, game theoretic way. Uh, formal uh, model, um, huge literature here, uh, but, but not on uh, so much on, on, on actually screening uh, applicants. So, so th this is a very new uh, admission system that hasn't been looked at before. Okay, I, I wanna uh, briefly outline the model. It's very uh, similar to the example that I gave. So just uh, in very abstract terms, we have students and colleges and uh, Students have uh, uh, cardinal preferences over uh, colleges, meaning that, that we, we can assign numbers on how much they like them. Okay, Th this will be important because we also need to think about our application and screening costs. Um, the new thing here is that there is a unobserved element of the students that the colleges do not observe. And, and we, we can operationalize this with uh, um, this, um, um, a measure, and, and we, we assume that eligibility score is some signal of this, but also that, that if uh, the colleges actually screen uh, and, and, and have information disclosed, they actually learn the true type. Okay, so, so this, this is a natural assumption. It's a little bit hard because we assume a full revelation or perfect prediction, but, but we, we could also extend it to a setting where it's uh, not, not a perfect prediction. Um, okay, so uh, I just want to say that that the, one of the reasons why the Nobel Prize was given was for uh, this property, the ordinal strategy proofness. This carries over to this setting. So, okay, uh, 
first good thing. The, the next thing that the Nobel Prize was also given for was this uh, uh, elimination of justified envy, and, and it also they both satisfy that. Uh, to some extent, the one of the mechanism less so because you, you cannot have uh, that it, it the the quota based uh, satisfy elimination of justified envy across across the quota. So it's only within the quotas. Okay, uh, that, that's. I, I, I guess it's natural. We, we don't have time to go into it, but just trust me that, that the properties we want are there. Uh, one other thing uh, I, I want to say is that uh, the reason why we, we, we sort of like uh, the Danish system, which was the first of the ones, the quota based, is that it's more safe, that students cannot be harmed by disclosing more information. And, and this is, is obviously beneficial. Uh, otherwise, people would be afraid whether they should uh, disclose information. All right. Um, final thing I want to say is that uh, in 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 large instances, so if, if we have many uh, agents or, or students, then then there is a unique uh, equilibrium uh, if we just sample agents. Okay, and and this is what's going to be uh, uh, allow us to gain traction on a, a welfare analysis that I'm going to uh, show you now. Okay, so we had in the example we had that our mechanism actually outperformed uh, deferred acceptance uh, when we had uh, either uh, everybody uh, was screened or no one was screened, okay? And, and, and that's, that's sort of the, uh, the takeaway that I'm gonna tell you is, will, can also be the case now. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna show you sort of the mathematical conditions for wh when that takes place. And I'm gonna argue that they are natural, okay? So first, I'm gonna. This is a simulation approach. Uh, th this was some earlier work that we did, uh, and we compare uh, deferred acceptance uh, without screening uh, to a, a setting where we we, we start uh, 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 allowing agents to report uh, the the true type and and be be screened. So the unified uh, David mechanism. And what we see here uh, when we do that, so on the vertical. Uh, axis we have the the mean utility of students and uh, on the uh, horizontal axis we have the excess correlation so it means how much is my inherent ability uh, correlated uh, with uh, my preference for a given uh, study program okay and 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 if if the the cor excess correlation in terms of underlying ability is much higher than the signal in of the eligibility score then the this uh, voluntary information disclosure is better okay so so if ability and and preferences are correlated which is pretty natural to say if, if you're good in something you'll maybe also like to keep studying then we see that uh, voluntary information disclosure seems to be outperforming it it, it depends on how, how how much how high the costs are uh, if the costs are, are large then then it's not the case but we, we still see the same pattern Okay, so, so students can actually benefit from this. Uh, so it is, it's not only uh, uh, that the, the colleges are able to set better, to select better applicants. If preferences are correlated with talent, then, then we, we actually have that uh, students can also be better off. Okay, um, that's sort of what I have written here. We can also uh, do the same thing for colleges. And here, uh, we, we can show that, uh, that okay, if there are no screening costs, it's, it's almost obvious that the colleges can select better uh, applicants. And, 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 and that's the, the, the case that, that uh, they, they will. Um, and once we start introducing screening costs, it depends on, on how, how uh, on, on the horizontal axis here, we have the correlation between the eligibility score and college payoff. And that, that's to say when it's high, then there is no additional value in, in knowing the underlying type because the eligibility score is a good signal. But when, when we move to the left, then, then we have that voluntary information disclosure reveals a lot of information and, and that's when it's, when it's good. Okay, so, so the, these simulation exercises show us something about when the voluntary information disclosure is good. Um, and, and, and we, we can actually show that, that, that they, they are welfare improving uh, under certain realistic uh, conditions. Okay, um, I, I just want a, a very fresh result that, that I, I, we are working on, on proving is that uh, we can actually show uh, 
in closed form that that actually it is not only a simulation thing but but under certain uh, restrictions uh, if if we have a low uh, if for a given quota or a given college we're analyzing uh, should we admit more students under disclosure then then the result here is saying that uh, yes if, if if we're admitting sufficiently low then then raising it will be uh, also um, improving uh, college's welfare so this is to say we will we will we are we're looking towards an in interior uh, solution where where uh, you you want to screen applicants okay it, it I, I don't know it, it, it's a little bit uh, uh, advanced but but it, what I'm trying to say is that what I what I uh, what we started out showing uh, in in the example is is actually something we're very close to show very generally also in close form that uh, deferred acceptance can be improved upon uh, on under very natural conditions uh, if we at least on certain restrictions on with independence uh, and and we we're also extending this to the the uh, student um, welfare and and also showing that. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, that by redu that not screening all applicants can also improve welfare. Okay, um, and 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 this, this this these are really strong results that indicating that 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 there is scope for uh, this uh, partial uh, screening. Uh, so could be of interest uh, to other settings. Okay, we we are very lucky to have access to some awesome data. So I just wanna. This is this is not showing that that it, it, it it's working. I, I just want to validate certain parts of the model with uh, the empirical analysis. Denmark uh, has used this system for forty five years, which is also evidence that that it it, it seems to work. And uh, annually, we have around a hundred thousand applicants that are uh, assigned uh, using this. Okay. Um, the first hypothesis is that screening actually works. That that we give up better prediction of who are likely of completing colleges. Why do we care about this? Well, actually the kind of like US universities get tuition for students that who, who, who stay in their uh, programs. Uh, Danish uh, universities get paid for uh, students that complete. Okay, so, so if you can predict the completion rate, you can actually make more money as a university. Okay, and, and, and what we show here is that correcting for uh, your grade point average and and all the other information they have, then then the the, the screening rank actually uh, provides uh, quite quite a lot of prediction. It's not perfect, but uh, th th that was the first part. Um, the other part is that uh, we can actually uh, save resources by introducing this because the students who uh, are already qualified to be admitted using. Uh, Say the regular assessment or, or just the course assessment, uh, don't don't do it. Okay, and and that's exactly what we see here. Uh, we see that students uh, who have a GPA above the the cutoff do not uh, disclose information about themselves, but the students who are below uh, do it. So so it also it, it provides a second chance also to students for uh, uh, being admitted. Okay, I, I think uh, I'm uh, over time. Maybe we have time for a question. Uh, Um, I'll take advantage of this predominant position. <laughs> so, a very interesting talk. Um, I have some questions, but I don't want to abuse also the time. Um, first question is, so you're assuming that students are aware of their type, basically, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you also provide them a tool to understand their type that they can access? Without sharing this information, of course. No, and and I think I think it's is one of the major weaknesses of the yeah. system that that yeah. actually you have that it, it's much easier to predict whether you get admitted through the GPA yeah. based uh, admission yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than the, uh, yeah no, but I think yeah. I think the framework is very interesting. So okay, I'll just skip to the next question um, concerning fairness. So okay, yeah, I mean this is the perspective of a centralized uh, institution. But um, 
Have you thought about the fact that somehow um, you are predicting uh, like, um, like the success of the students in a system? So are you taking in consideration the fact that perhaps uh, given that it is a centralized system and given that it is like a kind of homogeneous education, uh, you are missing uh, like some students that, that maybe do not fit into that kind of system. Yes, uh, I, I, th I think it's a great question and it's something that, that even in a homogenous country like Denmark, we're starting to getting aware of and, and our university, University of Copenhagen are looking into, you know, how can we make uh, uh, blind, you know, admission policies and, but, but I think it has to go a step further and, and also uh, be mindful of the fact that giving opportunity to especially disadvantaged groups in, in certain, uh, I think particular studies like medicine and, and law uh, where, where it really matters uh, with inclusion, I, I, I think would, would, be, would be very good. And, and, uh, and we, we're also doing follow-up work where we are trying to see if we can sort of beat the, the human uh, because right now it, it's human assessment that that uh, does the admission, but uh, could a machine actually be better at predicting uh, admissions and uh, be more fair? Yeah. But but this is super dangerous because then basically you. I mean yeah no sorry okay. yeah I <laughs> no sorry yeah thanks thank you very much. I think I'm just gonna go along with what Federico was asking. Uh, how can you guarantee that the system wouldn't perpetuate the sort of inequalities that society has? It's like, you know, some marginalized group have a tendency of dropping out of schools, not because of their academic uh, prowess, but because of, you know, societal factors like familial interactions with uh, society. So like, I feel like, uh, does this system take into account that the fact and does not actually perpetuate the, that, that inequality is, that is pervaded, perv that is in society? No, and and I think I think uh, one big problem of the current system is that uh, I think to some extent it was supposed to act like a second chance for the marginalized groups, but it seems that actually it favors uh, people from a more privileged backgrounds. So I I I think that yeah, uh, so more more had, has to be done there. Yeah, I, I just wanted to know if you're aware. Of it. Yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks yeah, for yeah. thanks for the response. Hi, thanks so much for the talk. I have a question about the uh, correlation of the, um, in, in some of your charts. So it goes from zero to one, and I'm, I'm wondering what um, might happen if it, they were negatively correlated, in that the interests of the students might be like different from the interests of the university. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a good question. Um, I, I think that uh, in, in a way, it would have to be that, that you're, you're applying for something that you're not good at in general, which is, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, no, it, it's definitely possible, but, but then that, that would definitely make the system uh, not good for the students. Yeah. Maybe being the final speaker, thanks to the organizers. It's been a great conference. Yeah. <laughs>